Macy's is the brand long identified with the kickoff of the holiday shopping season. And for years, it spent big to identify its star logo with star power. Almost midnight, yes, Macy's, Macy's Black, Black Friday, Friday sale. sale. But lately, it hasn't been all holiday cheer. And that was before the coronavirus crisis forced it to temporarily shutter its doors. The retailer has fared better than some of its peers. In the first half of 2020, 18 major retailers have filed for Chapter 11 protection. Macy's is not, but the historic company is hurting, raising questions about how far its star could fall. Macy's first opened as a dry goods store on 14th Street in Manhattan in 1858. Near the turn of the century, two German-Jewish immigrant brothers, Nathan and Isidore Strauss, bought a controlling interest in the company. And in 1902, they moved it 20 blocks north to the store's present flagship location at Herald Square. It became part of an upscale New York shopping district known as Ladies Mile. The brothers took the company public in 1911 on the New York Stock Exchange. The following year, Isidore Strauss died along with his wife Ida in the Titanic disaster. Nathan Strauss continued growing the business, and in 1924, the company expanded to take over nearly the entire block across from Herald Square. And the retailer heralded itself as the largest store in the world. That same year, 10,000 people gathered in front of its store to watch a small procession, which would eventually become the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. The company survived the Great Depression, and by the mid-1940s, with American servicemen returning home from World War II, Business was booming. Single-day holiday sales passed a million dollars for two years straight, which would be more than $14 million today. During the Cold War, the brand became a symbol of American capitalism and consumer choice. The store was shown off to a top communist leader during his 1959 diplomatic visit to the U.S. Before the store opens, Mikoyan is escorted through Macy's for a cross-section of what's offered the American shopper. The company expanded around the country. By the mid-1970s, it had a chain of 72 department stores in 10 states. Sales grew into the 1980s. Then, in 1986, the retailer's chairman and CEO, Edward Finkelstein, took the company private in a $3.5 billion leveraged buyout deal. And the leveraged buyout loaded the company with debt, and that debt eventually tipped it into bankruptcy protection. In 1994, Federated, a rival department store chain based in Ohio, agreed to acquire the brand. They bought Macy's out of bankruptcy. And then you fast forward to 2005, when Federated at the time was the number one department store chain in the country. It merged with the number two player, May Department Stores Company, and renamed itself Macy's. And that's where we get the sort of current incarnation of Macy's Inc. It was a landmark deal that created the first truly national department store chain with stores from coast to coast. And they had, you know, beloved brands, uh, Marshall Fields in Chicago, Filene's. They had sort of these local brands around the country that they eventually did away with and renamed all the stores Macy's. Federated sought to give all of them a coherent image with splashy national TV ads that starred the celebrities who sold branded products in their stores. Only one star can bring all these stars together. That's the magic of Macy's. It's good to be back here at Macy's. Thank you all for coming. I'm very excited for my new shoe line. And then the economy tumbled. Signs of a recession were in the air. Between dismal retail figures and the subprime mortgage crisis. In 2008, the Great Recession brought a sharp slowdown in consumer spending and steep losses to the company's balance sheet. The Great Recession of 2008, you know, was challenging for all the brick and mortar chains and Macy's in particular, um, you know, struggled during that period. It wasn't until 2010 that Macy's returned to profitability, thanks in part to double digit growth in online sales. By this point, it operated more than 800 department stores in the U.S. For the first time, all 800 Macy's stores will open at midnight on Thanksgiving. But for the retailer and its peers, the post-recession good times didn't last long. All of a sudden, the impact of Amazon and online shopping really started to eat into their sales and margins. And traditional brick and mortar chains woke up to the reality that they had way too many stores and 
chains like Macy's, um, The Gap, you know, these beloved sort of retail brands that were in every mall, started closing, closing stores. Big box retailer Macy's is saying goodbye to three malls right here in Hampton Roads, leaving a big impact on more than 250 pl employees. And a big heartbreak to thousands of shoppers. The company continued cutting costs, closing stores, and in 2014, it laid off 1,800 workers to try to save $100 million a year. The good news for Macy's, it had an online strategy that was working. Macy's.com became the seventh most popular online store in the U.S., but online sales proved to be less profitable. You know, for traditional retailers like Macy's, uh, um, shifting your business online presents particular challenges. Online sales tend to be less profitable than sales in a physical store. You've got all kinds of, you know, shipping costs really even to the profit margin. Then came the pandemic. Businesses across the country forced to shut their doors, already leading to absolutely stunning increases on unemployment claims. All that inventory literally got locked inside, and now it's become an aging asset inside stores across the country. You know, the country shut down and people aren't buying stuff. After months-long closures beginning in March of 2020, Macy's posted over $900 million in losses for the first three quarters of 2020. Despite this, it was in a better position to survive than many of its peers. The lessons they learned from their leverage buyout in the 80s really stayed with them. And, you know, for a retailer to take on too much debt is very perilous. This is what has pushed a lot of companies from JCPenney to Neiman Marcus to J. Crew into bankruptcy. To avoid debt, the retailer already had plans before the pandemic to close a fifth of its stores over the next three years. And on top of that, in June, it said it planned to lay off nearly 4,000 corporate staffers. A Macy's spokesperson says that by reorganizing how the company structured and reducing costs, it's in a good position to win with customers and emerge a stronger company. Not all the stores look great. I mean, they've got maybe half their fleet they've been investing in and upgrading and making, you know, into kind of marquee locations. Macy's has to find a reason to exist. Why should customers come to its stores when they can get so many of the products it sells elsewhere and sometimes for lower prices? One positive for Macy's, as its competitors fold, the company has a chance to pick up market share. Most stores have reopened and it's still got the annual marketing bonanza that is the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. Though in 2020, it will be a television-only event without the in-person crowds.